I know that there's a lot of skepticism about the vitamin D story because of all of the other studies suggesting that vitamin A may be helpful, for example, in lung cancer patients, and it turned out just to be the opposite. Every tissue and cell in your body has a vitamin D receptor. It's been estimated that probably up to 2,000 genes, one-sixth of the human genome, may be directly or indirectly regulated by vitamin D. We know vitamin D is critically important for your bone health from birth until death. We also know vitamin D plays a critical role in your immune function, definitely plays a part in reducing risk of infectious diseases, whether it will reduce risk of heart attack and stroke and diabetes and autoimmune diseases, only time will tell. So I think that these upcoming clinical trials are important, but hopefully they will be done thoughtfully and carefully, because a lot of these trials, they're so large, the only way the participants are gonna be getting their vitamin D is through the mail. And more importantly, especially for the vital trial, uh, participants are able to take up to 800 units of vitamin D a day, even in the placebo group. And so then the question will be, will you be seeing a significant difference for those that would be taking 800 units of vitamin D a day, along with getting some sun exposure, compared to a group that's taking 2,000 units a day? We need to look at them very carefully before we make any conclusions. My recommendation is simple. And that is, there is no downside to increasing your vitamin D intake. I often recommend children, 1,000 units of vitamin D a day, adults, 2,000 units of vitamin D a day. I personally take 3,000 units of vitamin D a day along with some sensible sun exposure and get a reasonable amount of calcium from dietary sources. So uh, there have been a lot of studies, uh, 5,000 studies in the past year alone, showing a relationship between vitamin D levels and different aspects of health, everything from neurologic diseases to cancer to, to osteoporosis to fractures to falls to frailty. Vitamin D levels and health outcomes are associated, but we don't know how and we don't know if there's cause and effect. Well, it's interesting. There really haven't been a lot of clinical trials, particularly for patient-specific outcomes such as death or cardiovascular disease or heart disease or neurological disease. This is a very large randomized trial, 20,000 subjects conducted across the United States, and the outcomes are cancer and, uh, to a smaller extent, uh, fractures, uh, as well as other uh, potential outcomes. But the major thrust is does 2,000 units of vitamin D have any impact on uh, a disease course, in this case, the development of cancer? Uh, and so this is the first time they've undertaken such a large randomized trial. So we've met some of the concerns from the previous small trials. It's large, it's patient-specific outcomes, and it's, it, it's designed for the power with 20,000 subjects to show an effect. So it's controversial, what is the threshold for vitamin D? But the Institute of Medicine gave us some guidance that 600 units of vitamin D a day in the diet in healthy individuals up to age 70 and 800 units a day in individuals over age 70 is probably very protective against skeletal complications such as falls and fractures. Some of that you can get from sunlight but we generally recommend dietary supplementation, if possible, rather than pills. And you can get that from specific foods. I think this is an ongoing controversy. It will continue to go on as long as there are these association studies that are giving us some bits of evidence. The conclusive data will come from the randomized trials. So we have to be patient and wait. In the meantime, taking a little bit of vitamin D is certainly not harmful and may be protected.